Hello and welcome to this rapid game 2510 playing Frank 216. Now this is China. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Probably getting a classical opening here. Okay, we have the Italian game. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not yet very versed in the two knights defense. I want to learn that. I mean, I can play the opening uh, in, in the odd game, but I have to be uh, honest there. It's not that I know it uh, in good enough detail. Castles, yeah, castles is an interesting move. It shows that there are a couple of ideas. One idea is to play a quick d4 here in this position. After knight f6, d4. The gambit line. Hmm. Yeah, I can avoid that with d6. Let's let's play d6. The drawback is that he can play c3, knight f6, d4 now. It's not um, a problem or anything, but it is. Um, yeah. It is the theoretical drawback of the 4d6 line. d takes e5 now is a pretty boring continuation. <laughs> so let's hope. Let's hope I don't get that. Yeah, it's 25, 10, 25 minute base time and 10 second increment per move. Enough time to explain the ins and outs of the game properly. Okay, so bishop to g5. <laughs> so I, think, I guess h6, yeah. I have to play that move anyway sooner or later to do something about that pin. And to be perfectly honest, I'm not quite sure what he does now. If he takes on f6, bishop g5 was um, completely um, misguided. And if he goes to h4, well, I can probably go g5, g5, bishop g3, and maybe even knight takes e4. It seems uh, playable to me at the moment. I'm not sure why I shouldn't take the big pawn there. Okay, if he goes, he can also think about the peace sacrifice, of course, but I don't see how that would work out. So let's go g5. Hmm. He can take e5 now, but d takes e5. I can even take the bishop, d e5. G takes h4, e5, f6, queen, f6, and this is excellent for black with the open g file and my piece is so active. Yeah, that's simply incorrect. That's just an incorrect move. Yeah, I have not castled. This is uh, quite important. So what is he going to do? I think, I mean, rook g8 is the... <clears throat> rook, g, uh, rook g8 is the normal way to to tackle this. Is there anything else that I can that I can do? Hmm. Uh, rook g8 is right. It basically wins a wins a tempo on the on the bishop. If he goes f4, I will take d4, and I'm threatening then to take on c3 with a discover check. Pretty awful.
Yeah, maybe he goes h4. One possible way to play then is just to take on g5. It's not the best move, I think, but it's something that quite often is um, is an easy easy option. Take g5, h takes, knight g4. The other move is rook g6, and this is what I'm going to do. <clears throat> Covering the knight from the from the side and preparing a queen move so that I can can pin queen f3 I will just take on d4 h5 then <clears throat> the bishop hangs there is really no compensation that sacrifice is completely incorrect on g5 <clears throat> it is sometimes interesting of course to um, give the piece there for the two pawns but normally um, the defending side has to have castled at least and without the king on g8 it's it's very rarely very rarely working Yeah, I wonder what is he what is he coming up with here? Difficult to even develop. Something like knight d2. I'll just probably take the pawn. I could have played bishop g4 as well, just recognize that. Yeah, well, not clear. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Pretty, pretty nice. My bishop on b6 now gets to be great. I just wonder where to go. e7 is making quite some sense. Just um, unpinning this way. Yeah, it is good. I think long here. Idea is simple now. Knight f, then the f move, the f knight can move the f6 knight, and then I go f6, pawn to f6, and game over. Also, e4 is just hanging now. Yeah, that's a pretty big one actually. If I can take the central pawn just like that. Oh, pretty awful. We should be five check. I just go to F eight. So completely completely save him yeah d5 wasn't <laughs> wasn't the most testing move but I, I really didn't see anything great there. One additional thing is that once I get that pin sorted out, 
I have a pretty big attack. Yeah, the bishop on b6. G file is open. Uh, bishop c8 is ready to to join. Yeah, to h3, something like that. Okay, so bishop g4. It's not clear. Well, it's pretty good actually. Why not bishop g4? Yeah. If he goes queen g3, I can play queen to d7, intending knight takes e4 and knight h5. Yeah, queen d7 was the idea. <clears throat> Covering g4 <clears throat> so that I can take e4 next or knight h5. Yeah, also Castle in Long <laughs> seems to be on the cards. But I don't I don't know if I still need that. Maybe I do. Yeah, so let's just for one moment think here if I have something better. Have a discovery here now with the bishop, which nothing, nothing wrong with this. Okay, so he's out for. F3. Hmm, yeah, maybe. Okay, anyway, let's get the final piece into the game, the rook here. Yeah, bishop h5, I did not want to play that move, but I maybe have to. Yeah, I probably don't have to, but... The sacrifices don't look so convincing. And I can also just attack with, with all the pieces. I don't need to sacrifice stuff. Rook g8 comes next, and then... It won't be long until all pieces are joining this attack on his king. Yeah, that will that will be pretty pretty tough enter. Rook g eight coming. And then uh, there are possible sacrifices on f3 already. But let's see what he what he does this one. Okay. So rook g8. He might play queen h3 and trade queens. Yeah. Okay. That's not the most exciting <laughs> thing to do. But um, anyway, 
So he is indeed trading queens, but check. But I'll just play that position. So knight g6 to f4. You can also attack without the queens, <laughs> it's possible. Okay, so check on F four. Yep. Check. I guess so. So if I t if I give it back on G four, there is no way how he's pre preparing uh, protecting the H four pawn. So let's do that. That will be the quickest way to do it. Just attack with with all those pieces. Bishop on b6, knight on f4, and the rooks. The biggest threat here is rook f to h6, and then takes on h4 and mate. I don't even see how he prevents that. To be honest, no, I cannot really. Rook f6, h6. It's pretty pretty deadly or rook f6 g6 alternatively yeah this one made next I mean he can sacrifice some stuff to to delay it but it will be made No, I don't see any any move to prevent rook takes h4, rook h takes h4. No spy checks. <laughs> is it really his made in? Is it made in two? Probably not yet, but yeah, okay, maybe. Maybe it's made in two moves. Yeah, I don't see how he avoids made in two now. Can just let the clock run down, overstep the time limit. <laughs> yeah, not much happening here. Yeah, anyway, this video will be released a couple of days before Christmas. And uh, what I can announce is that uh, over the Christmas days, I will do live streams as I did. Okay. Check. And, uh, rook h3, rook takes h3. I will do live streams just as I did last year. I will play some games there, probably on, on lead chess this time. Um, I'll take uh, viewer challenges, play against all people coming to the chat on Twitch. Wow. Draw offered. Ah, come on. You misclicked here. I, I'm, I mean, this is a serious game of chess. Um, yeah. So I will do um live streams, have some have some chats and so on. I hope you will all join in. Of course, I'll make um an announcement in the next couple of days about the precise dates and um, and times. I will try to. I will do more than one show, well, I mean, probably two or three, to see that uh, the various time zones um, are okay with the times. I'll, I'll do, um, yeah, three is a good number, probably. 
Yeah, and what is this now? You're not no lot you're going to let the clock run down, yeah, making a fool out of yourself or <laughs> I really don't understand the the kind of um, rationale there. Just resign it and play a new game. Try to learn from what you did wrong in this one. Okay. Checkmate. So let's see what happened in this game. Yeah, we had a, an Italian opening, Italian game. And this is an interesting move order, castles. It has a couple of points. One point is that with delaying other moves, white sometimes can go for a quick rookie one. For example, if black goes here, here, and now um, has the idea to play some ultra quick d5, then this is not a great idea because the rook gets to the e-file now very quickly. And this is an entirely different situation than with, with c3 being played. Black, white is just a bit quicker there. d5 is a very risky move. The second idea of castles is the move d4 here in this position. It looks a bit crazy, but it is a, an interesting gambit line. It is probably not 100% correct, but it is... Um, yeah, it's not easy for black. The point is that this is not great. So bishop has to take. This is, of course, also a move that leads to the so-called... Max Lange Angriff, Max Lange Attack, <laughs> weird English, um, yeah, Max Lange Attack, d5, takes, takes, check, check. and then this, this kind of, this kind of, uh, this kind of business, yeah, it's a full-fledged line, pretty, pretty sharp stuff, so it normally boils down to that, where white plays bishop g5 or f4, yeah, or f4, as he did now, d6 takes takes this this is an interesting line i think that black is probably um very okay yeah he made those moves knight a3 this is very okay but um it's something that i <clears throat> don't know well so i decided to cop out with d6 this can transpose to normal lines if white now goes here and here or let's say normal yeah more common lines but this is of course very logical just playing like this here white has a very boring option in taking yeah then i will take knight takes pawn takes check and and this kind of thing here black has no problems but uh yeah neither has white so it's not nothing very exciting here if white grabs that pawn that is uh, helpful you gain a tempo and then take here. Here black is a little bit more comfortable. It's not uh, nothing great, but a little bit. Okay, you went here, and this is uh, an interesting choice. And I don't, I don't really believe in it that much because after h6, you don't want to go back anywhere here. Yeah, none of this looks very promising. Here you can even question if I can take, take the pawn. You definitely don't want to take on f6. I mean, this position is just great for black with the two bishops and uh, pressure on d4. Something like this is downright awful. Yeah, here black has a very good position. <clears throat> yeah, and well, if you go here, you then have to justify this kind of this kind of position. As I mentioned, d takes e5, takes on h4, this, this, looks good for black, yeah, black is uh, hoping for a good play on the g-file, and everything is coming out super quickly, h3, bishop g4, and so on, now that is pretty strong, so we went with the sacrifice, yeah, and as I said, this doesn't work at all. Yeah, the engine wants to take the pawn on d4, but this is also a good move. Yeah, d5 going back. Yeah, knight h7 is also possible. But this is, I think, pretty convincing. Black is better developed and is the one with a potential attack on the king side. 
And I'm a piece up <laughs> for two pawns. Okay, this was played. Yeah, I'm just going for the simple moves. Maybe <clears throat> there was something even more powerful. I hear rook fg6 is even a little bit Check. stronger, but still, that is not a Check. playable position. And bishop g4 now is uh, that leads to a checkmate in a couple of moves, according to Stockfish. Yeah, cannot cannot defend it. Check, checkmate. And here we <clears throat> had the mate on the board. Um, yeah, that line with d6 is a good option if you want to avoid the somewhat weird complications of the of the d4 gambit move. Um, theoretically, best is to allow the gambit and uh, and accept it. But I'm not a huge um, expert i keep forgetting this line i have looked it up once or twice but i keep forgetting it so normally i just play with d6 and i'm happy with the resulting position so why not do it okay well thanks for watching